webinar series. Yeah. Teach and learn. American English webinar series. Welcome to the American English webinar series brought to you by the American English team at the U.S. Department of State in Washington, D.C. We're so excited to see teachers from so many countries all around the world joining us today. My name is Jenny, part of the American English team, also known as Moderator Jenny. And you'll also see my friends Moderator Katie and Moderator Heather in the chat box to help you. We do have a few changes since our last webinar series. Um, can you raise your hand if you've participated in one of our webinars before? So as you may have noticed, the program is now called the American English Webinar Series instead of Shaping the Way We Teach. But don't worry, you can still expect the same great sessions or maybe even better. Also, our webinars are now 60 minutes long, and in previous courses, you know they were 90 minutes. What's most exciting about our new American English webinar series is that each month, the webinars will be related to a very specific topic that you can find on the American English website in the Teacher's Corner. So in addition to the webinar, you'll find lots of resources, lesson plans, and much more related to each topic. So here you can see the schedule for this series. After today, our next webinar is on September 23rd, and that will be called Podcasting in the Classroom. As many of you already know, during these webinars you will hear but not see the presenter. And the way for you to participate, as so many of you are already doing, is by using the chat box. And this is where you can ask questions or make comments related to today's topic. We may not be able to answer every single question during the session uh, because there are hundreds of teachers participating, but there is another place for you to ask the presenter questions once the webinar is over. Your presenter may also ask you questions, and these can be in the form of polls or in the chat box. And we know that some of you may experience technical problems, and unfortunately we cannot fix individual technical issues, but we will do our best to help you. Um, but if there is a global technical issue, we will let you know. Um, and if you do lose sound, a great way to follow along is by watching the caption pod, which is at the bottom of the screen. Each webinar series consists of six webinars. And during the series, the webinars take place every other Wednesday. So if you participate in at least four out of the six webinars, you will receive a certificate, and that will be from either your regional English language officer or a local U.S. Embassy. To ensure that you are eligible for the certificate, we will ask you to submit your attendance, but only at the very end of the webinar. Please do not submit it before that, or it will not be counted, and we will give you this information at the very end of the webinar. We will give you a link, and you will submit your attendance. And finally, we hope that all of you, or most of you, are already familiar with our Ning site. But if you haven't joined this site, please do register, and then you'll have access to so many additional resources. This is where you can ask the presenter additional questions after the session is over. You'll find the recordings of the webinar, the PowerPoint, readings, lesson plans, and all sorts of information on our Ning site. You may have been to this site before and you notice that looks a bit different, but don't worry, all of the same information is still there. And to join, you just need to go to the website, click on join, and then register your information. 
Okay, and now for today's webinar. Today's topic is social media as a tool for community engagement, connecting your classroom locally and globally. Some of the greatest minds in education have challenged us to look beyond the framework of our current English language classrooms to prepare our students for the future by deepening our teaching to include 21st century skills. But how do we teach all these skills while meeting other demands? In this webinar, the presenter will show us how to connect community service and social media in our classrooms and develop a project-based approach to engage with students' local community. Our presenter today is Eve Smith, who is currently a consultant in English language programming and writing center development. He was a former English language fellow in Ukraine, Georgia, China, and Russia. And Eve Smith also worked as a senior instructor, instructor with the English Language Center at the University of Macau. She enjoys scuba diving and painting in her free time. So welcome, Eve. Thanks, Jenny for that wonderful introduction. Uh, welcome everyone to American English Webinar 1.1. I'm Eve and I'm really excited to be with you today for this webinar. I'd like to give a special shout out to those of you who are joining us for the first time. Very exciting. Thanks for being here. During our webinar, I'm going to discuss a project you might do with your students and talk a lot about social media. Don't worry if all of this is new to you. Just focus on social media, on one social media tool you can take and learn to use at home. My goal is to introduce you to possibilities for what you can do with students. Okay, so today's webinar, as we just learned, is entitled Social Media as a Tool for Community Engagement, Connecting Your Classroom Locally and Globally. Let's take a quick look at our um, pre-webinar polls, or actually, let's take a quick listen to, since we won't actually see them. So 75.6% of you are involved in community service, and 57% of the students that you are teaching are involved in community service. This is fantastic. Well done, but there's always room for more growth, isn't there? In this webinar, we're going to explore how we can be even more involved in community service and at the same time, teach our students to use social media. It's like a two-for-one sale. Yay! So, community. According to researcher and professor of sociology, Dr. Brene Brown, we are, as human beings, wired to connect with others. In her words, connection is why we are here. And it is connection that gives us a sense of purpose and meaning in our lives. A major, a major portion of connection is through language. This is one of the reasons that using a project in the classroom is ideal. It's a win-win. First, the projects are engaging and fun. We are giving the students skills they will need to prosper in life or, at the very least, we are helping them to develop curiosity, and lifelong learning habits. Second, students learn con content and language that will help them connect it with others in a meaningful way. It doesn't get any better than this. Community service projects have a place in the ESL, EFL classroom, and today I will give you some ideas on how you can integrate both social media and community service into your teaching. With that in mind, let's talk about what the goals of the webinar are. First, I, the presenter, 
will outline a project-based approach to engage students with their community while teaching language, grammar, and vocabulary. Second, I, the presenter, will connect community service and social media with developing the 21st century skills of, this is where you fill in the blank, but before you fill in the blank, let's look at the idea of 21st century skills. These are skills that are recommended by the U.S. Department of Education after collaborating with teachers and experts of around the world in education fields. They, come up, they came up with all of these skills. So these skills are necessary for students to thrive once they leave school in the future. When you think of social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, a blog, Think about what students will have to learn to do to successfully participate and grow in an online community. What skills do they need to develop? Take a moment, and if you have a piece of paper or a notebook, just write down whatever comes to your mind. What are the skills that they will need to develop? Okay, I'm going to interrupt a little bit here. If you filled, if you wrote down on your paper or filled in the blank with some of the words from the pre-webinar poll, you are totally brilliant. Or <laughs> at least you identified one of the both most basic teaching techniques, and that of familiarizing students with content as a warm-up. Here you will see all of the words we had listed in the pre-webinar uh, poll. So we have flexibility. Almost 30% of you said that this was an important skill to develop. Leadership, 40% of you said that leadership was an important skill to develop. Creative and critical thinking, many of you believed that this was an important skill to develop. And entrepreneurship, at 21.3% of you thinking this was an important skill. Entrepreneurship. This looks like a pretty big word to me. Let's break it down. Basically, entrepreneurship means to create business opportunities. And towards the end of this webinar, I'll actually talk to you a little bit about how and why this is important for us to be teaching as students. But I was very happy with the poll results. It seems like most of you hit the major key themes, the creative and critical thinking, learning with technology, and cross-cultural understanding. However, flexibility is important to teach our students. Leadership is important to teach our students. And as I mentioned, entrepreneurship is important to teach our students. Later, when we have finished the webinar, if you go to the discussion board on the Ning website, I have put a list of all the 21st century skills, um, a link to the list of all the 21st century skills that you can follow to find more information about each one of these. So all of these skills are developed through the type of project-based learning I'm going to talk about today. What to expect from this webinar? Background. We've already started. I'm going to explore the rationale or reasons that I've focused on teaching using social media in the way that I have. Throughout this webinar, I'm going to refer to two people I really respect, Sir Ken Robinson and Dr. Don Topscott. I've listed a ton of informational TED Talks on the resource page of the Ning to develop your knowledge and understanding of the background information I'm presenting. You can go there after the webinars today and find all of that on the resource page of the Ning. For some of you avid TEDers, this is an opportunity to revisit the talks you've already seen. Project. We'll go briefly through the basics of project-based learning 
And then I'll give you a sample idea for a social media campaign and some steps to follow with students in the classroom. We'll also do the brainstorm stage of the project together. So you will know what it feels like in the classroom. All resources will be available for download on the Ning. And finally, we have the summary. So we'll review whether or not we've achieved our goals of introducing 21st century skills and introducing the project. And we'll talk a little bit more about information and resources. Like all beautiful things, we've got to start with a little background information. I'd like you to answer in the chat box, true or and sorry, as a poll, true or false. Human communities depend on a diversity of talents, not just one type of ability or idea about ability. All right, let's pause it there with 97% saying that this is true. Let's go back to our slides. And the correct answer is dun 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 dun. True! <laughs> As a community, we need all types of thinking, all types of minds, because this helps us to problem solve and have a diversity of ideas and opinions that holds us together. For example, sorry, can everyone hear me? Okay. For example, we need people that are good at math, people who are good at art, people who are logical thinkers, people who are abstract thinkers, people who are concrete thinkers. These are all different types of thinkers. Together, we complement each other and we create a rich and vibrant society. Thank you, everyone in the chat box. Thanks for letting me know you can hear me. Yes, it is very similar to multiple intelligences. That's a good connection. So these are different types of intelligence. Let's look a little deeper at intelligence. The definition of intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. Intelligence needs to be interactive and diverse. Basically, you have to be able to use both sides of your brain to, or to think in different ways. We can teach diverse thinking through English by including arts and other activities that use both sides of the brain. Currently, we are building students who all think in the same way and do the exact same things. This isn't going to help us in the future because we don't know what the future will look like. Previously, we knew more or less what our world was going to be like. We were all going to have specific types of jobs. Either we were going to be a banker, a lawyer, a factory worker, a store clerk, etc. With technology moving and changing at the rate that it has been, we've actually no idea what the future holds. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> As Sir Ken Robinson says in his 2010 TED Talk, we have to widen our understanding of ability and intelligence. We no longer need everyone to think in exactly the same way. We don't need to standardize people. We need diversity of thoughts and experiences. That's why creativity is important. Let's take a moment to look at your own areas of creativity. Where are you creative? Let's go to the polls, and I'd like you to let me know which area, dance, are you a painter? Do you draw? Do you write? Take photos? Do ceramics? Cook? Decorate? Or something else? 
Wow. 40% of you are taking photos. That's fantastic. This is actually ideal. And right. Amazing. Love it. Cooking. 49%. Wow. 50%. This is fantastic. So while you're fi um, filling this out or clicking <laughs> what it is that you are good at, one of the things that I wanted to share with you is for some of us, we may, may not feel creative. We not, may not feel like we have the ability to be creative. This is false. I also had that same thought in my mind for a little while. And you can see on the right side of the screen the picture, the painting of the train. This is something that I painted this past summer. I only began painting in 2012. After many years of thinking, I would not be able to paint. So basically, what I'm trying to say is if you don't feel creative, there's never a bad time to start. We all have the capacity to be creative. We just have to begin. So it's wonderful to see that 62% of you are cooking and 60% of you are taking photos. About 54% of you are writing. We have some painters, 22%. Almost 30% are drawing, 33 are dancing. This is fantastic. Let's go back to our slides. The areas, all these wonderful areas that you just identified as creative outlets for yourself, use these areas to support English lessons in the classroom. Find a way to integrate pottery, painting, drawing, cooking, whatever your talent was into the classroom. Our students will benefit from learning these different ways of thinking. Next, new learning. According to Dr. Don Topscott in his 2012 social, um, TED Talk, social media is the new means of production. This basically means that we are no longer training our students to work in a standardized way, as I mentioned previously. If social media is production, we're no longer going to be going to offices, to factories, to work as store clerks. We're going to, most of the market will be online using social media. Our job as teachers is to prepare students to get, engage in social media so that they will develop the skills that they need in the future once they leave school. This next bullet point, education needs to feed the spirit. What does it mean to feed the spirit? Feeding the spirit means engaging in education and activities that make us feel in the zone. It also means we feel that we've done something good for our community and ourselves. You might be wondering, what does in the zone mean? Doing something in the zone means we are working on something or doing an activity where we lose track of time, we lose track of our ego, we feel fully energized, and we feel really, really good. Raise your hand if you have ever had an experience when you were doing something where you looked at the clock and one hour or more had, excuse me, had passed but you felt like it was only 10 minutes. Wow, so many of you. That's absolutely fantastic. So, for those of you who raised your hand, you were in the zone. Education can be this way. English classes can be this way. How powerful would it be if our students woke up every morning happy to go to school, engaged and excited, to take part because it was interesting and it felt good. In the third po bullet point, we were talking about all the different kinds of minds working together. We've already discussed this when we talked about the different types of thinking and intelligence. So let me end this section of background information with a quote by Sir Ken Robinson that he said in 2006. He said, creativity is as important to education as literacy. 
This is why we are focusing on social media projects that use creative activities like photography and storytelling. Now, let's talk about social media. Social media are virtual tools that help people to share stories, photos, videos, etc. in an online environment. Let's go to the polls and let's find out which of the social media platforms listed have you previously used. So Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, blogging, Twitter, Flickr, Tumblr, Edmundo, Wow, 90% of you are using Facebook. That's fantastic. So as you're in the polls, I just wanted to say I would do a social media campaign on one or more of these sites. The most popular of these sites are blogs, Instagram, and Facebook. Okay, so Twitter is almost at 40%. Instagram is almost at 30%. Facebook is winning <laughs> with 92%. This is fabulous. And other, in the chat box, for those of you who wrote other at 40%, could you please uh, write which social media platforms you are using? Okay, great. Let's go back to our presentation. Before we begin uh, the next section, not all of the audience will know all of the sites. So let's look at, the, at a few of the most popular sites in a little more detail. You can go ahead and put your hands down, by the way. Um, but first, I want to give you some notes for the next slide. If you see on the following slides, I'm going to look a little closer at some of the main social media used in business as well as personal platforms for sharing. You will notice that words will appear in the color orange. It will be computer, app, or computer and app. This is what they mean. If you see computer in orange, you can use this program on a computer. If you see App in orange, you can use this program on a mobile device, such as an iPhone, an Android, um, an iPad, or just a regular pad. Computer and app in orange means that you can use this program on a computer and mobile device with around the same amount of ease. So, hands up or raise your hands if you use Facebook. Already, We've done that mostly because I think, what, 90% of you are already using Facebook. So you can see that Facebook is great because you can use it on both a computer as well as a mobile device. As an individual, we use Facebook to keep in touch of the, with friends, don't we? We share stories, photos, videos, and jokes. This is also a place where we can show the best areas of our personality or of our business. We can also use it to engage students in new projects and programs. The Facebook that is currently on the screen is called Feronius Frolic. You can see that they use both photos and videos as well as description to engage people in traveling. Hands up or raise your hand if you blog. The reason that I have blogging listed as a computer resource is because it can be accessed on the app, but it's really hard to write an entire post on your mobile phone. It's much easier to do it on the computer with the keyboard. So on a blog, you can have both photos as well as stories. You can also have a video blog. So that's called vlogging. So you're telling a story using a video. This one is easier to do with a mobile phone and a computer. One of the things that I wanted to mention to you, the reason why blogging is such an important aspect or can be of social media is according to researcher Johan Berger of the University of Pennsylvania, people react 
to and connect with stories. Blogging is one way to encourage this connection and create an online community. Next, let's look at Instagram. So put your hands up if you use Instagram. Instagram is most commonly used on an app, although you can access it from the computer. It's not so easy to use on the computer. On Instagram, you can write a small description of a photo that you upload. This program is great because you can automatically link it to Facebook and anything you publish on Instagram will automatically be published on Facebook. Instagram is basically where it's at. It is the most popular because it is the most widely used. And finally, the last one we'll talk about is Pinterest. This can be used on both a computer and an app. So I like Pinterest because it's a wonderful picture building site that makes creating photo essays with the students really, really fun. If you want more information about a photo essay, you can go to the discussion area on the Ning site. I've posted some um, photo essays that I like in the discussion forum. So again, with these photos, you have the photo and you have a little description underneath of what you would like to say about the photo. So raise your hands if you use two or more of the social media mentioned. Fantastic. Oh, no, that's OK. If you don't, that's not a problem. You can start, hopefully, after this webinar. So let's look at social media campaigns. We're talking a, a lot about that. I've been mentioning it without defining it. Here's a definition. A social media campaign is a form of marketing that convinces people to buy or like products or ideas through social media. An example of a social media campaign is here on Facebook, and it's called Be A Rooney. So Be A Rooney is a campaign that was created by a woman who was bullied when she was young. One of her classmates, a young man named Rooney, would walk her home every day to make her, to help her feel connection and to help her feel um, safe. So she believes that he saved her life because he showed her that she was worthy of friendship in spite of what the other children were saying to her. She now has this social media campaign on Facebook called Be A Rooney that encourages children and young people to help others who are bullied by sitting with them at lunch or walking them home for, from school or any other way that they can connect with these students. She uses Facebook to keep the campaign popular. Now, one of this poster may look like something that you have already done in class, yes? This is a campaign. This poster is a typical poster that we would do with students. It asks the community of our hometown to join together to clean up a field that is covered with plastic bags. You can see the poster implies that the audience is the local community. It asks the audience to use a cloth bag whenever they go shopping, and to come home and clean up the plastic. They tell us who they are. They are the secondary school students of our hometown. And they tell us that at the bottom, you know, at the bottom of the poster, they tell us where we can find more information. We can look on Facebook at Keep Our Hometown Clean, or we can sponsor them by donating money on GoFundMe.com for their project. In the chat box, which of the social media sites that we just looked at, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, Instagram, which would you use to do a social media campaign using the information from this poster? Facebook, absolutely. Instagram, fantastic. Those are also what I would use as well. Blogging, good. I think blogging and Facebook would be really, really powerful. I saw that some of you mentioned the classroom. That's okay. But remember, our audience 
is the entire community. So if we're only having it in Google Classroom, this means we may not be able to reach the entire community of our city or our village or our town. Okay, so let's move on from this slide and sticker. Okay, Twitter. All right, you don't use blogging. That's all right. You can always start or you can continue using Facebook. So let's put the project together. Let's put all these pieces together. We've talked about social media campaigns. We've talked about posters. In this section, we will talk about the steps of a project. So we're just going to review the steps of the project. We will also complete a poster activity, which is the first activity that you will do when you are doing a social media campaign. This is kind of like their outline for what they would do on Facebook or what they would do on Twitter. So the classroom activity would be a social media campaign. This is full of language that they can use. So everything that they're doing on the campaign is in English. Um, it's providing a context for language usage, for grammar and vocabulary in action. And it's something that directly impacts them, right? It's something that they are doing for their own community. So this will educate, it will inspire, and it will help them to engage a little bit further with their community. Let's look at the steps for doing a project. As teachers, we always have to start at the beginning, or a lot of times we have to start at the beginning. And the beginning step is the purpose. What grammar or vocabulary skills would you like to practice? We have to sit down and think about this before we start the social media campaign project. The audience, who will the project be aimed at? In the poster I just showed, the audience was the community. Our audience should be our community. We have to look at time requirements. How long will the project take to complete? Oftentimes, a project can be from one week to three months. It depends on how much time you want to engage the students with the project. So who will participate? Our students and hopefully the community, maybe even the world, if the project is engaging and exciting enough and it's on Facebook. Materials, what we will need to complete the project. We'll need internet, we'll need a camera, a computer, possibly a mobile phone could be used as a camera or as a mobile phone itself. Now, if you don't have access to these materials, that's okay. You can do the poster and then you can make follow-up posters that you can put around the town. You can paint murals on town walls. Any of this is also in a way, social media. It's engaging the community. Connecting all of these elements together is making the exact plan that we will follow when we're doing the project. Obviously, you will make some changes here and there as you see how the students react to all the activities. But this is, in general, by three months this project will finish, or in three weeks this project will finish, and these are the assessment tools that I'm going to be using for each stage of the project. Doing the project itself is the next step, and you want to divide it into parts. You can have part one, part two, or part one through three, so that students are not overwhelmed and so that you are not overwhelmed. Also, dividing it into sections allows you to grade the project so it's more fair to students. They get a grade for the written presentation of the concept, the written presentation of the evaluation results, basically how many people engaged with the students, how big has their community gotten, why do they think they got that big, or why do you think they didn't um, grow. Descriptions of posts, Etc. And finally, evaluation is your assessment of the student's reflection or their, or their self-assessment period, as well as your actual evaluation. So if we were to look 
If you don't have internet access, a basic project could be making a poster using a photo like this. You send the students to take photos in areas around their community, and they find something they would like to change. Then they tell us why this is a problem and why they need to change it. Plastic is a toxigen. It can cause cancer, birth defects, immune system problems, and childhood development issues. So now I'd like us to pretend that we are going to, I'd like us to pretend that you are students. It's poster time. You will be doing a poster to prepare a social media campaign. Remember that we use the poster as the outline of a social media campaign. If you have a good poster or a good proposal, you will go on to create your social media campaign. If not, you will have to go back and do another poster. Just joking. That's only if you're a real student. First, the thing that I would like you to do is brainstorm something you would like to change in your community. Katie, could we please have all three of the slides up? Um, second, I'd like you to choose one of the items that you would like to change in your community and create a poster in English that includes all of the guidelines that you can see here. So the audience, who are you trying to reach? Who? Who are you? How are you supporting your community? Why? Why is this important? Why should people care about you and your project or your cause? And then which of the websites will you eventually put all of this information on? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. So we are going to spend some time. Remember, you're pretending to be a student. Take a piece of paper. Brainstorm some of the problems that you would like to solve. Okay? And we're going to listen to the song Super Talents from the American Rhyme CD. It's a free downloadable song on AmericanEnglish.state.gov. By the end of the song, you should have a rough draft of your poster, so your brainstorm and your poster. And so let's listen. Let's create posters and take our paper, brainstorm, Follow the guidelines, and the example poster is the one that I mentioned before, where you just tell us about your audience, etc. So let's listen to Super Talents and Work. Children, if it's something why you put it on this planet, this baby in the world boy. With the gift of God's good magic Each got to be in their life You just got to, got to grab it Practice it like it's the goodness Coming up automatic Make it so they understand It's all part of the plan You and I, we so valued We keep the world in balance With the gift of super talents We tell everybody, don't panic Come by the power, sit back, watch God handle it Tell your friends, if you can walk, you can dance If you can walk, if you can, you can talk, dance. then you can sing If you can talk, you can dance Savor, you've resisted the law. 
law of resistance Now look at what's on the table Your potential staring straight in your face But amazingly I'm saying it's deliciously true If you can walk, you can dance If you can walk, if you, you can, can talk, dance. you can sing If you can talk, you can sing Everybody's born with a beautiful gift Now that you know ain't that a beautiful thing Such a beautiful thing. Well, you all have amazing ideas for what you would like to do. Raise your hand if you actually used a piece of paper <laughs> and made a poster. Fantastic. Many hands I see going up. Right. So we didn't want to only be in the chat box. We also want to make a poster. If you didn't do it during this time, that's OK. You can always do it later. So the next step you would do as a student, you would choose a social media platform you would like to use. And you would take the information that you put in your poster, and you would try to communicate that information, that message, on your social media platform, if it is Facebook, if it is Instagram, whatever. And you're connecting with your local community and potentially the world. There are two reasons I ask you to do the poster activity we just completed. The first reason. By brainstorming some problems you already have in the community, it's something to work with your students in class on. So you have a list already of different problems that your students might potentially say, hi, I would like to talk about this, or I would like to talk about this. You already have a list. Secondly, you have now experienced the beginning stages of the project. You have created the poster. Again, the poster is the outline that you will use for your social media campaign. You can think about what worked and what didn't work when you were making the poster. Would this activity be OK for your students? What would you have to change? These are all ideas that you can think about. So when you do the activity with your students, it will be as successful as possible. So let's go back to the slides, the regular view, please. Thank you. And let's talk a little bit about the next step, which is the measure of success. You might be saying, wait, what are the students doing with the measure of success? Part of what a social media campaign includes is the campaigners evaluating their own effectiveness and updating the community on whether or not they were effective. Your students will have to be able to do the same thing. They will be reflecting on, is their social media campaign impactful, yes or no? As they have more of a social impact, the students will get more and more excited about the activities that they are doing. They will become more engaged. As they have more of an impact, this means also that the community will be more excited and more engaged. So one of the things with the poster we just looked at is if the students were judging whether or not they were successful by the number of bags of trash they picked up each week, and they saw that the first week they picked up 30 bags of trash, the second week they only picked up 15 bags of trash because there was less trash, this would be inspiring and exciting for them. So that would mean that they would say, hey, this is working. Yes. So that's the measure of success for the students. And that's something that they want to be reflecting on through this pro process. And they want to make any changes that they need to to the social media campaign to make it better. Now, the measure of success for a teacher, completely different. This is what we would call, actually, assessment. <laughs> so the options for the teachers, 
As I mentioned previously, we could grade the project in phases. We have part one, part two, and part three. I mentioned this earlier with you can grade the descriptions of the posts they are making. You can grade their plan for the social media. You can grade their review and their reflection of the process or excuse me, the project. You also want to think about making sure that you have students grade within the group so that when they have a group grade, it's a fair grade. So they come up with different criteria, like all the work was completed by my group members on time. All the group members came to all of our meetings on time and participated actively. And then they can grade the other members from one to five. No, one is no. They didn't show up on time, or they didn't do things effectively. Five being yes, they were there. And so you grade all the group members, and the student also grades themselves. Right. So this is the student grading this. Then you take that information, and you put it together with your grades. So it could be maybe 10% of their final grade includes the student's evaluations of themselves. And yes, I agree, rubrics are wonderful in this case. So an example, let's look at what this might look like, because some of us will say, well, this is a great idea for a project, but I don't have time for this in my curriculum. Day one, how to take good photos, very basic. I've already put some YouTube videos on the discussion site in our name that I might use. None of them are longer than seven minutes. Seven minutes at the end of class on how to take good photos, the students go and they take photos. The day two might be community photos. So the first day, they're practicing different ways to take photos. And the second day, they're actually taking photos in their community. They upload the photos on Instagram or Facebook, and they write the description of photos. The next day, day three, they're taking parts, pictures of parts of their community that they want to help, places they never noticed before, or problems that they see that they would like to solve, trash, bad roads, some of you said. So the students upload the photos onto Instagram or Facebook. They write observations. They reflect. And they post with photos. So this can go on and on and on um, to eventually where you get them in small groups and they're creating their poster. So it evolves organically. And it can be done in small, small steps. OK. so. Let's get to, I'm skipping ahead a little bit because we, we've already covered the, the slides. Chat box me, we're summing up now. What extra cool skills will a project like this allow you to teach in the classroom? So we've gone through the project. We've gone through some of the steps. I think it's pretty obvious that a lot of the students will be practicing reading, writing, listening, speaking. Yes, perfect. We also have the making or drawing pictures, being active citizens, drawing, writing, speaking. They are sharing. They're learning how to share, painting possibly, reading. They're practicing creativity and oral production. Very nice. These are really great. I absolutely love it. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Using social media, absolutely. So let's go back to our goals originally. Building confidence, that's a wonderful one. Collaboration, absolutely. We talked about flexibility, leadership, creative, creativity, and thinking. How did this project help the students learn flexibility and adaptability? How did it help them to learn leadership? How about creative and um, critical thinking? While you're writing that, I just want to share with you about entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. I did promise you that I would tell you about this. Because some of you might be saying, hold on a minute, Miss Eve. We did not address business opportunities, and we're not selling anything. Actually, social media, a social media campaign, is selling a way of thinking, an idea. It's getting people excited about 
this idea and convincing them to spend their time engaging in more information about this idea. It may even convince them to cr contribute financially to what you're trying to do. This is marketing. Social media is practicing marketing skills in an indirect way, and that is fantastic. Okay, great. I love that one of, one of you said that this can actually help um, us look at people's small voices, so a small community engaging the entire world in what the community is going through, and they can learn more about their culture. So entrepreneur, entrepreneurship, as we said earlier, remember, it means to make a business plan. It means to engage in um, business, to create business opportunities. Confidence. Creativity can be taught by comparison. Very good. The shy people will step up. Wonderful. OK. And what about English? <laughs> What are you all, by talking online, great, the community, they are learning that studying is meaningful, absolutely brilliant, I love it. They're using slogans, so they're practicing the language. Peace building, absolutely, absolutely love that idea. Okay, so let's move on to sharing is caring. I absolutely adore everything that you're writing in the chat box, and I wish that I could respond to you all, but I can't. But what we can do is share what we have done. So one of the most amazing things about these webinars is that you are joining from all over the world. I personally would love to see a slice of your life and your community. So you never know if what you are sharing will be an inspiration to others. Let's use our Ning site to inspire and gather ideas for possibilities for these projects. What I'd love for you to do is to finish your brainstorm or finish your poster that we worked on when we played the music. And I'd love for you to take a photo of it and share on our discussion form. If we do that, this is what it would look like. So you can go to the forum area, you can reply to the discussion, and you can insert your photo of your poster or your brainstorm. I would absolutely love to see what you come up with, and I'm sure that everyone else would as well. So please continue to visit over the course of the next week, and let's look and be inspired by what we're doing all over the world in our discussion forum. Before you go, I just wanted to show you the resources. These are the TED Talks that I used, and that there will be links provided on the resource page of the Ning. So you can go there and find more information. I also have a lot of information of journal articles that I used when I was preparing this presentation and some of the fabulous books. So Contagious, it's why things catch on. This was Johanna Berger that I mentioned earlier from the um, University of Pennsylvania. And Doing Good Together, 10 Easy, Meaningful Service Projects for Family, Schools, and Communities. This is a book that is for teachers on how to create projects. This is a wonderful book. It's from Free Spirit Publishing. Thank you so much. You guys are absolutely fantastic. Love you all. Have a great day or evening or whatever. And Thank you so much, Eve, for helping us to understand how we can use social media to engage our students in English learning, both inside and outside of the classroom. And participants, we're so excited to see those great photos you're going to share with us. 
This will be a great exercise in sharing resources on social media. And of course, we'd like to thank you for your thoughtful consideration of the great ideas presented for us today. And be sure to check out everything else that's available for you on AmericanEnglish.state.gov.